Hey everyone, welcome to Limitless Radio Cast, episode 111. Chad and I are hanging out with our good friend Logan Mueller today. He has been with East Coast Martial Arts since he was nine years old. In his 20s now, he is a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu brown belt under Chad Kuhn. We get into some awesome organic conversations, some old school stuff from when he started and from where it is to now. So, you guys, Throw those headphones on, turn that volume up, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hey everyone, this show is also being brought to you by Global Auto Detailing, located in North Canton, Ohio. They have interior services, exterior detailing services, complete detail services. You can get monthly memberships. You got to check these guys out. They are great at what they do. Warpath 55, located in Maslin, Ohio. Lanky Fight Gear. OldBonesTherapy.com. Thomas Webb of Dehoff Realtors. Candry Law LLC, Magic City Brewing Company, M&H Beans Coffee Company, Ronald E. Butler Tax and Accounting LLC, Limitless Tape. Listen, guys, these are our sponsors, and they help us tremendously each and every week do this show. So we ask you guys to support them as much as they support us. Now enjoy the show. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the show. Wow. Yeah, totally lost train of thought there as uh, sometimes I do. Anyway, everyone, man, I hope you guys are doing well out there. Can't appreciate you guys more than ever. And actually, I want to do some shout outs, man. I want to thank Thomas Webb of DeHoff Realtors for really supporting Chad and I to do this show each and every week. He's really been a huge supporter. He's helped us out financially, sponsorship material. We're always going to shout him out. And also want to shout out some good friends over at Global Detailing located in North Canton, Ohio. They do detailing, auto detailing, both inside the car, outside the car, full detailing, all kinds of stuff. Check them out, guys. The the stuff will be in the bio. You can get to them. Go check them out. They'll do a great job. But with that said, without further ado, you've heard us talk about this young man many times on this show. It's a great honor and privilege. He's been a mentor to me. And I know some people are going to be like, wait, there's a huge age difference here. But this is the thing you guys got to think, people. It doesn't matter how old someone is. If you can get knowledge and wisdom from somebody, then you should absorb it and use it and accept it and appreciate it. So with that being said, we're hanging out with our good friend, Logan Miller. Logan Mueller, he is a your second degree belt, I believe, right? In karate or third degree? Fourth. Uh, fourth. fourth. See, I'm totally, I should have asked that question <laughs> before. Yeah. So he's a fourth degree black belt in karate. He's also a Brazilian jiu-jitsu brown belt. He teaches youth jiu-jitsu. He teaches karate. He does a lot of other things. He's a great young man. We're so happy to have you, Logan, have this opportunity. You know, we talk about you guys, you a lot actually on the show and other people talk about you. So now you're here to defend yourself, right? So thanks. <laughs> I know, right? Thanks for having me on. <laughs> for sure. Definitely. Finally. I've just been throwing you off your game today, Terry. <laughs> I know. I just, um, it's just that time. I don't know why. I just was like, just kind of going with it. This is what happens. I'm just a very organic free flow person and a lot of things pop into my brain. Right, Chad? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> once that, once the red light is on, you just, you know, know. it's that stage fright happens. Maybe, maybe we start as soon as we log on, the red light comes on and then you can edit that out. That I can, yeah. Yeah, and then you can just, just flow, we could just flow into it instead of saying, "Are you ready?" <laughs> <laughs> right, because every you know? time I'm the only one that's never ready. Like yeah. I ask the guys this every time our guests, you, I'm like, "You guys ready?" I'll start. I'll start asking you. <laughs> I say, the the guest and Chad should be asking you, Terry. Terry, are you ready to start yeah. recording? Yeah, that's where we'll start every time. So, but so Logan, 24 years old man, started at East Coast Martial Arts. And actually, this whole time, everybody, uh, Chad, he's been under Chad Kuhn, and he started when he was eight years old in the program. He's been there to this day, uh, very phenomenal, very sponge-worthy mind of growing, and he absorbs everything. So how's training That's going, what they man? say, at least. That's what they say. <laughs> it's been going good. Yeah. Um, it, was, it, it was very surreal a couple of months ago when chad had yep. promoted myself tim stinson and russell all at the same time but uh to yeah, brown belt good so far yeah. brown belt yeah good but yeah it's good it'd be a surprise yeah. be a surprise right i mean i think you know a lot of people expected timmy to get his brown belt pretty soon you know for but i mean you guys are right there and you know it took me a little while talking to the other high ranks and stuff it's like oh i could you know, I could throw three stripes on Logan and make him a four stripe and then promote him in four months, six months, whatever the case is, you know, mm -hmm. but it's like, you're there, you put the time in and you teach well and all that stuff. So 
let's just do it. You might be a brown belt for a little bit, but nah, that's fine. You know, <laughs> being I uh, just... it, 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 I mean, you're young. You're 24 to be a brown belt at 24. But again, you've put in the work. And for me, um, the learning curve is is less. You know, it took me 14 years to get my black belt. When we're going to have guys getting their black belts in maybe eight to 10 years, but, but depending on them and the time they put in. So for me. I have to think of this as your journey, not mine. Like I was a brown belt for six years. That's not your fault, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, you know, some people are really hard on rank. Some people are a little more lenient. And I feel we have a very in the middle of the road where our guys are still tough. Um, but I don't expect you to be more than you are either. You're, you know what I mean? Like some guys yes. want, when you're a purple belt, they want you beaten black belts. Which you're going to have some guys like that, sure. But that's that's not everybody. And again, I've said it a million times. I'm not going to compare you to Terry, or or you know, it's not fair. You're you're in your own journey, and right. You're just, I mean, just we've we've, we've it, talked you know? about this on the show many times, Logan. You you probably heard it, <clears throat> but Trace is he's a really good blue belt. To be quite honest, he's a good yeah, young. He's all right. <laughs> he's all right uh, I won't give him too much credit now. Yeah. The only the only one we haven't brought on the show to defend himself ever. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that's happening. I don't think that's happening. Oh, Trace, not, yet. That was an, not yet. You gotta. <laughs> if you thought this was, yeah, maybe when you get <laughs> to purple you off. Belt, Trace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you're not going to compare. I'm not going to be compared to him. I mean, come on. Like, there's a huge age difference. There's a, th- a huge learning curve. There's a huge uh, amount of time putting on the mat and ability and that kind of stuff. And I think that goes into every every person's journey being ranked and in their position. I mean, look, uh, you know, we make fun of myself and throughout the time but i'm always asking questions i'm one of the only people in the class that ask questions out loud (laughs) like it's like i wish more people would you know i really do i just feel and i think it's a maturity thing because you're still like sometimes people are like oh i want to be in the back of the class and not raise my hand you know instead of being the person in front of class and going i don't care if you look at me like i'm an idiot because right now i am an idiot that's why i'm asking this question i'm not really an idiot but you know what i mean and logan you've seen this i mean Mm -hmm. look at when you taught the other night and uh chad i know you stepped out uh logan Mm -hmm. did an amazing job teaching Mm -hmm. on wednesday night it was phenomenal it was great stuff because it brought a lot of uh we did perimeter work perimeter Mm -hmm. work going around arm bar straight arm bar stuff that really in your wheelhouse of the of the planting straight arm bar all that good stuff but um so I think of people asking questions in there and I was like, man, there's a lot of questions people could be asking here. Now I didn't ask them and I waited and there's a, and no one did. And there was a lot of, you know, newer white belts in there, but I think getting comfortable in jujitsu because the intimidation of walking through the door being this, you don't even have to be shy, I guess. It's just like, it's intimidating, you know, like to walk through that door. So I think that's why people don't ask Like one of the things that, sort of translates between you know the martial arts program and the jujitsu is like nobody really asks those questions so like it's not just a jujitsu specific thing there's right. like, a lot of like young children who have very you know active minds that are like constantly thinking about things that just they just don't ask those questions and i reiterate a lot of times to them it's like hey i'm not gonna be mad if you ask me like a really good question but if you ask me three times to go like get a drink of water that's going to annoy me right <laughs> sure, but like right. if you're asking like important yeah. questions that are you know trying to help you understand the position better i'm not going to be mad like i will answer thousands of those if you give them to me um 100 but you you really it's you just don't see as many people asking those questions until you know they're in the middle of a role for jiu-jitsu yeah. true and it's like well hey yeah. how do i do this and it's like well when we were training it last week or even today you know, you, you should have been drilling it more yes like, like you're yeah. not going to learn the position drilling yeah. it twice like i understand if you're brand new to the position like if we're finally talking about half guard and you've never done half guard before your first day of training should be drill 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 until you're like okay Maybe now I have some questions about it, but the one thing you shouldn't do is as soon as, you know, we break, Hey, go and train with your partners. Race it. Go boom, raise your hand. Hey, Chad, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, I've, I've hey, Pete, I don't know. How do I do this? <laughs> yeah. Hey, you didn't, Logan, you didn't try. You didn't try. You didn't try. Try the move. <laughs> like you're not gonna, like, I can't do the move for you. 
Right. Yeah, I can walk you through the move, but it's going to be better if you try like, if you try and make the move work, and then five minutes later <clears> say, <throat> "Hey, I'm trying this. It's not quite working. Can you show me where I'm going wrong?" That's a much better learning experience for the student than just saying, "Hey, I, can you show me the move?" <laughs> uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, you're good. <laughs> good. No, you're 100 percent right. Um, I was just thinking of this as as Logan was explaining that, Chad. <clears throat> you may know this already, but actually, Logan came up with this awesome. I, I want to say it's new because <laughs> someone out there is going to be like, "Oh, this isn't new," but it was I meant really to talk sweet. With him a lot of the other day. <laughs> oh, did you? Um, yeah. perimeter drill, like getting into perimeter under hook, you know, rotate or not under hook, but, um, over hook, pinching the elbow going mm -hmm. around to get like that Kimura lock and to, you know, get that backside, but almost like an ankle lock where kind of leaned forward and Logan, you could probably explain it better than I can, where you take <laughs> that, um, elbow, their elbow and kind of tuck it underneath your armpit mm -hmm. and, and, and then like twist from the top yeah, it's easier so, to show versus obviously verbally we telling. had started in the knee on belly position and i was talking about you know different options that we have you know we can windshield wiper our legs the other side we can perimeter around those were the two options i gave and i said okay well maybe this time you know we're gonna feed the arm under like instead of clamping over top we'd get an under mm -hmm. hook right and we go to mm -hmm. the straight arm bar or maybe we finish the perimeter and go to a kimura lock mm-hmm and it was off of the reverse grip Kamora lock instead of like your traditional ones. So you feed mm -hmm. it the other way. And then I was just slipping my elbow over top, almost getting like a foot lock grip and mm -hmm. just slowly torquing it. Yeah. So that was just yeah. something that I, I was messing around with trace and I hit it and I was like, Holy crap, I got to show my dad. And I, <laughs> over and I was like, Hey dad, watch this. And I did it on Terry. And he was like, yeah. what did you just do? <laughs> It's nice like, because don't you know. don't have to move. <laughs> you don't have to fight as, I'm going to say fight as much, but you know, you get a Kimura lock. Someone's trying to keep, they're trying to reach their belt, their gi, whatever, to keep you from pulling that, you know, Kimura lock back to bend that arm back and manipulate the elbow and the shoulder. When it's in the pocket there, it's almost, you feel like it's all shoulder. It's like just more of a shoulder lock than it is that bending that, you know, elbow forearm back. You like, you can just move a little bit. And obviously bigger guys, I mean, those bigger like chest barrel, whatever can grab that. And it's so tight. And after doing it a couple of times, I'm like, Ooh, okay. <laughs> the, the, the trick is, is being able to get, not lose your balance and get that elbow into the pocket, <laughs> mm -hmm. which can be done obviously, you know, but I wanted to bring that up. I thought it was very cool. <laughs> Because I like this stuff. Like I told you the other night, uh, Chad, some people discount the um, what we call basic techniques. And I don't really <clears throat> want to say they're basic techniques. I, think, I say they're the huge foundation to what jujitsu is built upon. And yeah. doing, you know, like drill it a hundred times. I don't care if you know it now, even drill it more and try to get smoother and try to get smoother doing it, you know, and, and, you know, that's, uh, you know, I got to work with Ron and that's what I was telling him, you know, he's like, I'm not. I'm not really good at doing this. I said, just keep working it because you're looking now, you know what the move is. You're just looking yeah. for smoothness, it's like trying to do it smooth, you know, so that kind of comes with speed and doing it over and over. Like Logan just said, do as many reps as you can, man. Don't just sit there on the mat and like chit chat. That's awesome to do. And we've said it a million times on the show. There's what well, there's nothing <clears> like <throat> sitting with your buddies on the mat, talking about a great story or just hanging out, but also do your reps, man. Cause you're not going to yeah. get any better if you're not. Go ahead, I think we've been, I mean, you know, we do, we do need to, you know, some, some guys don't like drilling. I think it's better than it used to be maybe mm -hmm. right. Every now and again, we'll have to have that, that conversation, but I think our guys, and probably because they don't know any better, but they, they accept our fundamentals very good. Right. You don't, we don't have a lot of guys coming in like white belts. I will say like, Hey, I saw this on Instagram as much as we joke about it. I don't think that happens that often sure, right. at the lower ranks. Mm -hmm. You know, once we got some purple belts and they'll be looking at stuff and I saw this, but even trace as much as he does jujitsu. And I don't think he watches that much. He trace never comes in and says, Hey, I saw this weird thing. What do you think? Trace takes what we teach and, and he drills it, it and yeah. does it. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. so once guys get a little higher rank, you know, you might see some, uh, that, but you don't, not too much. Do we have anybody doing any crazy stuff again. unless I should, unless I show it. Yeah. That's what I mean. And again, <laughs> it's to the testament of the, the we, environment. 
you know yeah and, 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 and when i say crazy like what's the craziest thing i would show the truck and that's <laughs> right. not even that it's just a somersault it's just a right. four uh shoulder roll yeah. it's not even that crazy you're right if anyone out there doesn't know jujitsu and you're listening to this show awesome thank you so much for tuning in but if you do know jujitsu trucks to start or, or yes they're hard I, he like discounts it <laughs> But this is coming from a blue belt to a black belt because <laughs> I'm like, yeah. wait, which way am I trucking when I'm in that position? And I'm like, oh, crap, I went the wrong way. And the person's looking at me like, you idiot. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, dude, the hardest part about the truck <laughs> is just being comfortable doing a shoulder roll. Like if you yeah. can get comfortable yeah. doing a shoulder roll, that's it. And, like yeah. maneuvering You're right. the body. It's it's a piece of cake. Yeah, but it's a really lot of people yeah. just haven't tried moving their bodies in that way before since they were a kid. Yeah, yeah, too really, stiff, a little too, too stiff. stiff or, yeah. and that. Yeah. Hey, speaking of that, like, how many times? Maybe we don't even talk about it that month much about being loose in your movements and don't be so stiff because I think that's how you get injured. Like, because you're afraid to do it, so you stiffen up so much to where yeah. you tweak your neck, you you fall on your face, or you you go to do a shoulder roll because you think you know how to do it, but you're so stiff that you end up yeah. bending your neck sideways, and you're like, oh, I hurt my neck. It's like, you, you got to relax, man. Like, I yeah. understand it's new, you know, so. Yeah, I don't know if it's afraid is the right word they're doing. Some people are just tense. Or Logan just I talk, tense, sure. We talk a lot. We've talked a lot about different people being tense, even in our karate program. Like, man, why are, why, why, why are your knuckles white? You don't need to be gripping <laughs> sure. up that, that hard. Right. Like, <laughs> right. And typically when you're gripping up that hard, you're doing something wrong. You're, you know, you're trying to make up for something. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, just be, don't be so rigid and that's easier said than done. Sure. It is. It will come with experience, but <clears throat> I mean, obviously Logan, I mean, you were young. So you started at eight. When did you start yes. the jujitsu program? So started karate at eight years old. Uh, it took me about four and a half, five years to earn my first degree black belt. Okay. Once I earned my black belt, I started teaching. So Mr. Hyman was like, hey, I want you to start teaching these classes, like helping the instructor that's teaching. I eventually want you to start teaching. So from like a very young age, I think it was about 13 at the time. He was like, hey, you know, we're going to start coaching you up to start teaching. And around that time, Mr. Hyman had made a couple of comments about you know the program in general where he said you know i want all of my instructors for the karate program to be brazilian jiu-jitsu blue belts and the day he said that i was next day i was in the class nice training so 13 years old started jiu-jitsu now granted my dad had been doing jiu-jitsu for a couple of years at that point and i was like you know what? we're going in dad i'm starting he had some old Atama gi and I was like just put it on we went so started training jiu-jitsu at 13 13 14 ish and so we're in year 11 I think nice. jiu-jitsu right now no so. and you I mean technically and we talk about this like you know east coast side northeast Ohio not a lot of jiu-jitsu still around that time in the area mm -hmm. you know you started with uh like Chad would say, get hooked, he'll hooked on your first day and don't know what the heck's going on. <laughs> yeah, not quite. We were no. a little, we were a little safer when Logan I was going to say, so that's what I was getting. I mean, cause he was younger, obviously. Right. I mean, I, I would think, but, but the guys well, were still just, like, you wanted to go in and fight. Right. Versus uh, now? to a point. Okay. I mean, it might've been a little harder, but it not, it was still safe. I would say. Okay. And one of the things that, you know, I kind of had going for me was three ish years prior. So like probably when I was like 10, 11 ish. Um, I had started doing the kickboxing program. Oh, okay. And with that, you know, I'd seen a couple of different instructors come through, and eventually it was Pat Schottenheimer who was teaching. And, you know, I was training pretty much, you know, every day we had, it was Tuesday, Thursday at that time, of kickboxing with Pat. You know, Stinson was in there at the time. Alex Poinar was in there. Tyler Feller. A bunch of these dudes who were just, we were just going, right? And when I transitioned into the jujitsu, you know, a lot of those other guys, you know, that group was also friends with a lot of the jujitsu guys at the time. Okay. So like, you know, nobody was going to mess with Pat if Pat said, don't mess up Logan. So <laughs> <laughs> if in that, um, those who don't know Pat, um, <laughs> and this is a time when Pat was powerlifting 
and he was very he's our he's a, a big gentleman great guy love this guy um but at that point in time he was very strong not that he's not strong now but he was a lot younger than he is now too so just to point that out there like you know over six feet type deal just just a gorilla <laughs> so anyway yes i can imagine like don't mess with logan yeah. and pat says it and you're like okay <laughs> <laughs> no problem yeah. <laughs> yeah so it was just like to have the respect of you know all of these guys from the rip where it was like hey you know like we're gonna coach you up we're gonna train you like we're just going sure so it was for me it was it was obviously very daunting because it's like ah the extent of jujitsu i had was what we do in the karate program which is mm, you know, sure. very basic jujitsu to then it's like hey we're we're learning. We're going. We're gonna try and learn as much as we can. We're gonna try and get as best as we can in it. So yeah, yeah <laughs> yes, there were hard days. <laughs> <laughs> um because you know, there was a core group of guys that were just like, No, we're not gonna stop training. Like we like sure. you haven't drilled enough today. Drill again. Yeah, drill again. Yeah, keep drilling. So which and this is and and Chad, you can speak to this more because obviously you're in your gym a lot in your time is there there's always core people that are kind of always there kind of always like you know may have some small time off or whatever but for the majority there's a core people i know a lot of people come and go in your time of seeing it but there's always core guys that really influence what's happening in a terms of you know teach not even te not teaching i don't take anything away from you because i think you're a phenomenal teacher obviously um but just your opinion like have you seen that in your time chad because i know logan you've seen it right there's been like core guys that stick around like your dad your dad's been around a long time um you know stinson well, yeah, I mean, was out the, for a while the, came back yeah you know myself you know i was out for whatever here <clears throat> these several months and, and came back you know but you know yeah you you see the the core guys that have put the time in because of the rank right that's sure. how you know who the core guys are. okay as far as uh how long they've been there right sure so if you if you <laughs> comes in and so you see three or four brown belts walking around. Yeah. Those guys have put in some time and have been there for a, a while. Um, so yeah, that's how you, that's how you tell our core guys. We have five black belts now. Right. Obviously that, that, that shows right there. If, like this is kind of for both you guys, obviously Logan, cause you're, so, you were so young. You're still very young and coming into the gym <clears throat> and Chad for you, we haven't talked about this. It's not a huge deal, but this is our show. So listen up people. Um, <laughs> How good is the feeling of that, of to come as far as East Coast martial arts and in, in Canton, Ohio has come to go, look, man, we yeah. got we got black belts walking around, legit black belts, like not just ranked. Yeah, that's yeah. Legit brown belts, purple belts. Yeah. You know, that's that's huge. I mean, I, I yeah, never really that's the surreal, that's the surreal <clears throat> part for me. Like Logan said, getting his brown belt was very surreal for me walking around and see last night at Nogi, we had 32 people in class. Wow. That's I mean, a, it's, that's it's, so awesome. It's crazy. And, and that's not, you know, we, I would say what's our average Logan, 20 people in a class. I mean, easily, easily in the, yeah. especially in the evenings. I mean, yeah. um, we'll have, you know, noon classes with 15 to 20 people and 6 AM, 6 AM, <laughs> they'll have 10 to 12 people in classes. Crazy. So it, it's nuts. And for people that so, don't know how much map space do we have? Uh, mat space. We have probably about 4,000 square feet of mats. We have a lot of mats, which is more than most, a lot. Academies, yeah, for, schools, yeah, for sure. Facilities. Yeah. Most I'm going to tell, I'm going to be just honest yeah. with everybody out there. That's more than most. And there are times when we can't really do takedowns when we're going to roll because there are too many people taking up the entire mat yeah. space and it's just not safe. So we'll, you know, start, yeah. start low or we'll grip up and, you know, kind of go from there, but we're not shooting double legs or anything. So that just give everyone an idea who's listening. Like we have a huge amount of mat space and we have room for you too. If you haven't tried it and you're listening to the show mm -hmm. right now and you want to come in and beat me up by all means, come on. I'd be more than happy to let you arm bar me maybe once or twice after that that's it <laughs> there's always more room there's always, always more, room. more room yes <clears throat> yeah but that's for for me that's the you know i can remember you know starting when it was one day a week or then we had got gi another day and uh broom mike broom and logan knows a broom that was around for a while he was my first instructor and we'd have like maybe 10 people in a class and broom would say how am i going to teach all these people right and now it's like dude, we have triple that in a class so but that's again Preaching to the choir, that's the atmosphere and the culture that we've yeah. 
continue to grow and you know and logan, what makes it know, logan literally literally grew up in that that's right? and that's what i mean I like mean, so grew up you i mean you are a product of that environment <clears throat> of growing up in it man you've been around it i mean eight years old you're 24 now and i know you're not leaving anytime soon <clears throat> so it's like and then i look at this like people like I said in the beginning of the show, I asked Logan a ton of questions. How would you do this? I roll with Logan a ton because he not only teaches me a ton, he's hard on me, but he pushes me in the right way where he's, you know, he's not hurting me. He's putting it to me in mm -hmm. a way of getting me better. And I love him for that. It's a huge asset that I think everyone out there should embrace don't just discount it because there's a huge age difference, you know, yeah. but, um, <clears throat> look at how many, like thinking of questions now, well, shoot at East coast martial arts. We have a ton of rank belts walking around the mats and, or they're, they're drilling at the same time. Like <clears throat> when, when Logan's talking about that, him and I train kind of regularly. Now when I'm there, we're drilling, like, we're not just sitting there goofing around, like we're drilling. And if someone has a question, Logan can get up and go at it, go answer that question. And there are plenty of other people, brown belts and black belts that are on the mat at the same exact time to help everybody. So that culture has been built. So I know we beat that dead horse all the time on the show, but it's, yeah, I think it's, it's vital for people to understand fact, man. It's a fact. <clears throat> it's really good. When I tell people like, they'll compliment the gym on the atmosphere or whatever. And I'll, my response is, I don't know any other way to do it. And it's true. Yeah. Just it's the way it yeah. happens. You know, that's good. We might need a bigger space. Yeah. Someday, yeah. Someday we yeah. might need like the biggest space on the planet. Just knock out that back wall. <laughs> that's yeah. Right. Just take up the next space behind it. Yeah. Anytime I'm out driving around and I see like a huge building, it's like for sale or whatever. I'm like, mm. Ooh, I wonder if that could be converted into like a giant. Yeah. Gym. <laughs> is it on fulton road yeah right they have right, to be on fulton. right it has, it has to, be fulton. to be on fulton it's like that's There's the no mo right it's the mo of the uh of the gym <laughs> and the history of it has never been off that road has it no not never. besides the garage the garage which was you know the original somewhere, yeah. yeah but still somebody i don't remember who told me they were telling me that um fishers uh, the one on fulton mm -hmm. that there's a they have a basement <clears throat> that has a yeah, separate that has a separate entrance. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that might be a cool place for a gym. <laughs> that would be. Well, the yeah, crazy you know? part is, is, um, you know, I don't want anyone to lose their income, their livelihood. Oh, but yeah. unfortunately, if you're local, you know, Fishers is kind of on the, well, I think that, the way Fishers, out. <laughs> that Fishers is okay. From what I've heard. The one. Yeah, on see, so there's the one holidating. They're consult, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, so the one on Tusk locations, locations, except yeah. the one on Fulton, there. Yes, yeah, so that's the only one. Is, is yeah. the only one that's going to stay open. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. For now, that liquor store is keeping them afloat. That's yeah. what I say every time I drive by that place. Because, like, the front of the building, there'll be like you know, handful of cars. But on the side of the building, where you go in, where the liquor store is, there'll be like fifty cars. And I'm like, that place is rocking. Like people are buying their alcohol, man. <laughs> but hey, to each their own. That's all good. No worries there. So what else is going on, Logan? Oh, you know, Jim's not the only thing, man. He recently I, uh, <laughs> graduated from college not too long ago. Yes, I graduated December 2022 with a degree in business administration and a focus in professional sell selling. That was his 17th change. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was my third. I know. I know. Because you what, started, you were going to be an engineer, right? Yeah. Started in civil engineering, got yeah. like two and a half years into it. <laughs> like, yeah. And our, one of our professors was like, hey, just so you all know, like if you guys design a bridge or a roadway or something and it fails, you guys can be held liable. And I was like, not nah, good. <laughs> I'm, I'm out. out. <laughs> like, I don't want to do this. So immediately went to my counselor. was like, hey, I'm switching out of this next semester. Put me in business. <laughs> and I was like, uh, let's do accounting. Because my grandfather was an accountant. My one uncle is an accountant. I was like, third generation accountant. Here we go. <laughs> and uh, was not a fan of taxes. I don't know what it was. If it was the teacher or just couldn't understand it. I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm done. I'm going to switch out of accounting and I'm going to go into just general business. And then with the University of Akron, when you go for a general business degree, you need to have an accredited minor. 
Oh, um, I didn't know and that. So they give you a list of like five or six. Sure, that you can, that you can select from. from. It's like, hey, <clears throat> take your pick. And I was like, oh, well, sales seems to be the most you know, applicable for what I want to do in my life. Let's go with that. Because you know, if you can't find a job, let's go sell something. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I decided, you know, I'm going to take the sales minor, ended up loving it. Um, graduated and here we are on the job hunt nice <laughs> on the job hunt. on the job hunt i just saw something the other day everyone out there you guys know who mark cuban is obviously the owner of the yep. dallas mavericks super rich guy they asked him a question and they said if you lost everything you had but all and all you had was 500 dollars and a phone what would you do and he was like it was the greatest question as an adult that i've ever been asked in my life he's like i would go get a sales job and and triple his income. That's what he said. He was like, I would do go get a sales job. And it's amazing to the amount of people that I know. And my wife will go, Oh, what do they do? And uh she's like in sales, right? Like she'll joke. And I'm like, no, that they actually are. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that's the majority of it. Seems like it's like the huge biggest field that people are in now. You know, <clears throat> like I'm an engineer, but I mean, there's a lot of people in it, but it's mostly like, oh, you're an engineer. You're not in sales. I'm like, no, no, like everyone's in sales. Like, a lot of yeah. stuff to sell. And now there is a lot. Sell. And by nature, uh, what are we by human beings? We are consumers, right? We want to consume oh, as much yeah. as possible. If it's not something on social media, I mean, it goes back to, hey, how much clips are you watching to get better at jujitsu instead of just training jujitsu? You know, all of them. All of them. Every single one. <laughs> In your time, Logan, because you were young, you were, you, yes. you still, you know, like that social media part is, you know, you evolved into that, you know, like we did, we're older. I understand we've seen some other things, but you really came into that. It's like your, your, <clears throat> your generation of the beginning of that social media trend we've talked about on the show before. Has it ever influenced your jujitsu at all to a small portion? Um, sometimes. Okay. Um, I mean, mostly what I do is, you know, what we do, whatever Chad and Pete say. Correct. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, sometimes I'll be like, Hey, you know, I've seen this. Can we talk about this position or something? Yeah. Not, Hey, can we do this crazy cool submissions? Cause like, ah, right. is that submission really going to work? <clears throat> it's like, if you're watching like Instagram reels or like TikToks of jujitsu, you, you kind of have to take them with a grain of salt. Because there's a couple of factors. One, who's the person who's doing this? Like, who's the one doing the move? Is it like a national championship winner, like a world's title holder, or is it some random guy from Kansas who maybe has a black belt in jujitsu doing it? Right. Sure. The next is, you know, how plausible is it that this move could be hit in a live role against somebody your own rank? Right. Because like, if we're just doing these cool flashy moves. To like beat up white belts and blue belts. What's yeah. the point? <clears throat> yeah. If it True. doesn't work on somebody who's of your same rank or higher, what is the point in doing that move? Sure. Yeah. So I, it's just it's kind of hard when there's so much content out there to sort of filter through all the BS and look and see. You know, this is a great example of how to do this move. Do it like this. You know, at the end of the day, ask your coach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, yeah. Hundred percent. What's this? I yeah. would strongly advise, you know, not looking at all of those when you're a white belt, because there's already so much being thrown at you in classes yeah. that you don't need to go to these external sources to, you know, supplement your jujitsu yeah. fill, right? Yeah. Watch matches like, instead. Watch that's matches. What I was, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Watch that's what, yeah. That's there's what you so told many me. good <laughs> resources that you'll have in your own gym. And, you know, if your gym doesn't have those great resources where they're like, oh, yeah, just go watch all these YouTube videos, like that, ah, maybe find a new gym. But <laughs> yeah, facts, um, for sure. So it's just, you know, personally, <clears throat> I don't watch too many. Like if I'm scrolling through like one of those apps and I see one and I'm like, hey, that's that's pretty cool. I'll like send it to my dad or like he'll send me one. Yeah. yeah. And we'll just be like, oh, that's cool. Let's try it. And then, you know, do we try it? Do we not try it? And right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Speaking of dad, Chad, how many uh, like daughter, son, parent combos have you had outside of, you know, Logan and his dad? And then I know mm. there's one other 
Who else is that? Dad, Dad's son now. There's Kirk. Oh Brad yeah, kid. Kirk, yeah, Trav- Kirk Brad, Travis, Travis and Brad, Kirk Bride. Yeah. Okay. I was just curious. I was just. It made me think about that as you brought up your dad, Logan. Um, another person that people have heard us talk about many times on the show. Um, great, great mentor to me as well in teaching and fellow brown belt as his son, <laughs> which he doesn't like. I'm kidding. He's listening to this right now. <laughs> And he's just going to be like, ah, he'll just wrist lock me. Like he did yeah. Wednesday night. He did get me in a good That's wrist all the time. Lock. I know. I was like, you dog. Like literally. Somebody showed him laughing. the dark arts and he just ran with it. <laughs> yeah. Being a cop, I, being I a retired know. cop, that probably helps. Huh? Yeah. A little bit. I had made the comment uh, Wednesday, Chad, you were already gone. Right? Yeah. Because I showed that uh, like reverse Kimura grip. And I was like, yeah, the Mueller boys, we just specialize in mean moves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's not well, lying. No. Well, cause, yeah. Cause he was talking about, um, like Pat Schottenheimer doing the impaler on somebody. Oh, like, oh yeah. Jesus. Yeah. So of course the impaler. I trace, but yeah. it was the move I did on you. You grabbed. The oh, the pole. yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Very gentle. Yeah. Very gentle. Yes. I very gentle. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No. <laughs> Logan's very nice to me. He teaches me well. <clears throat> makes me learn it, and then makes me feel it, but not to the point to where you know. Now, don't get that wrong, everybody out there that listen to this show right now, and if you are in our gym and you roll with Logan, or you never have, because he can put it on you, <laughs> no problem at all. <laughs> yeah. I, Without um, hesitation. <laughs> Wednesday at noon class, Tom Tanya came in and he's like, my God, Logan killed me last night. <laughs> he's like, he destroyed me. I'm like, oh, that's all right. Built character. Yeah. yeah. It does build character. Because yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, even though I started out at, you know, 13, 14 years old, like the roles were like, they were nice, but they weren't, they weren't nice. They weren't right? nice. Right. right. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, for sure. It's like, hey, like we're, we're going to go hard. Yeah. Like, but like a controlled hard. Right. So it was just yeah. something that, you know, you get used to or you don't get used to. Right. Yeah. So, and that can sort of, you know, change your trajectory of, you know, where you go in jujitsu. Do you yeah. stick with it? And like, it, do you accept yeah. it and say, hey, you know, like, this is what I want to do. Like, I'm going to, you know, nose to the grindstone and no. we're just going to drill. We're going to go. Yeah. And I think or, we have a good happy medium of that too, where like me and Logan can roll hard. And, and if somebody came in, saw us doing that, they'd be like, man, those guys are trying to hurt each other or, right. you know, whatever. <laughs> right. Right. But we, but you know, as long as we've been rolling, we can control that and still have a good, hard, mm. hard roll, you know? Yes. A hundred percent. That's yeah, why the difference um, between going ahead. hard and trying to hurt your partner. Yeah, for exactly. sure. Exactly. Yeah. And that's going to that's come control. with some experience too, you know? Watch, watch you watch some of those white belts. Get. Yeah, like, it's just, hard. They, it takes so long for people to understand. It's like, hey, you know, we can we can do moves with like a lot of purpose. Like we can be deliberate in our actions and not hurt our partner when we're training. Sure. Everybody yeah. like a bunch of white belts, the, the one thing they do is they like tense up, they're like, ah, the whole time. Yeah. Right. And that that's how you're gonna get hurt. Because either you're gonna annoy the upper rank that you're rolling with and they're going to crush you or yeah. you're going to accidentally get hurt because you were trying to fight your way out of an arm yeah. bar or something yeah yeah 100%. recently i had one of the newer younger white belts signed up for a membership and he's like hey um can i cancel this if i ever need to because i'm injury prone i'm like well yes but why are we injury prone at your age you're like under 20 years old right like he's 18 19 whatever that's the greatest like, statement I, i've ever heard <laughs> i know i'm like let's look about how we're rolling with each other you know <laughs> like define to me can, injury prone because i think we have a problem here if you know yeah. that you're injury prone <laughs> yeah let's fix the problem let's go back to the right. root cause here <clears throat> right so i credit logan to pushing me or like I think it was this week uh, when we were rolling and you're like, don't quit. Like we had 40 seconds Tuesday. left and I was, was it Tuesday. Yeah. And you're like in my ear, you know, side mountain, you were like, don't you quit on me? Don't you quit? Like, and I needed that because <laughs> I was about to, I was frust- not frustrated. I was frustrated with myself because I've been having, you know, I've had those, like, I'm really sore and I'm tired and I'm like, what the heck's going on? And I was like, oh, it's going to be like drive home, no music night. And then it yep. snapped me out of it because <laughs> Logan pushed me to finish and I was tired and I took a break, but I was like, that's what I needed. Like I needed someone to get after me because I know what's in me and I know I can do it. And that's, it's awesome. Like we have that at our gym 
to an extent, I think most of us upper belts will do it to the younger belts. Like we'll try to help them. And then we're in each other's ears too. Like, come on, let's go. You know, like Chad, you constantly, we rolled this week and it was, I love the role. I haven't rolled with you for a while. And we, we were going not hard, but like we were good and hard physical, enough, strong, hard enough. And it was like, you would act like, are you all right? And like, yeah, keep going. And then we were fine. You just keep working through everything. And I was like, this is great. Like I need these type of instead of me picking out a white belt and going, Hey, you want to roll? And then going ah, what were you thinking? <laughs> yeah. Then you're fighting the whole time. Yeah. And then I'm like, yeah. ah, well, they didn't do any moves. I just like needed to get on top and just crush this guy because he's freaking out. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, that's just good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like I can accept if somebody has like physical limitations where it's like, oh, Hey, I can't, sure. I can't do it. But what I can't accept is somebody mentally giving up. Like oh, the yeah. second you give up, like you're dead. Yeah. You're dead in the water. Yeah. And <clears throat> to me, that makes me not want to, like as callous as this sounds, like I don't want to roll with somebody who after, you know, one, like ha like three, three minutes of us going hard and you're like, no, I'm done. Like yeah. I'm exhausted. I can't go any further. No, like you can't. And yeah. guess what? You're going to. You're going <laughs> to. Yeah. We're not stopping. For the whole six minutes. Yeah. I had a story. Like, I, I don't know if you, you ever, you remember that story I told? Remember Tony Hyde? uh mr Hyde. i remember i remember tony but. yeah so he was rolling he went hard like mm -hmm. I love him i miss him he moved away um he was our i think he was the first karate instructor to get a blue belt i think he was the first one. Oh wow well. or no you would were you, you were the, teaching right you were first yeah, yeah, yeah. he was the he first was, of the the yes. new batch i guess you would mm -hmm. say but anyway we were rolling one night and he would go hard and he was all over me and i finally swept him and got on neon belly and he's like i'm done i'm done i'm like no no, no, we're not. no we, are, not. we are not done. Yes. <laughs> we are not done. So yeah, you got to like, sometimes we have to carry our teammates and push them and just yeah. verbally, verbally talk to them. Like you can do this. Yeah. yeah. Be uplifting, pour into Cause, them. Cause just be, just like we, we get muscle memory of the good techniques we do. You don't want that muscle memory kicking in of stopping or mm -hmm. when it gets tough or done. I mean, because that's that's real. I mean, we know how easy it is to have a bad habit and then fix that bad habit, right? Yeah, Gotta which is go. super hard. It, it takes so long <clears throat> to fix a bad habit. Yeah, yeah. By the far. old the old adage I was told when we were growing up in karate was: for every one time you mess up, you have to do it three times correctly. Yep. To just break even. Yep. On that technique. I remember Mr. Hyman doing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like if you like misstep one thing in like your one self-defense move you had to do that whole section three times to go on to go on yeah hey it's good be like you guys both said i have lived in this world of it's a pet peeve of mine as well being a coach coaching sports and seeing a a young athlete do something that you know is a bad habit and you're like why is no one fixing this bad habit? <laughs> oh, that's not, they'll, they'll, they'll grow out of that. No, they will not because you, nope. you've implanted the bad habit. They will do it forever. You know what I yeah. mean? Like you need to restructure that. And by doing it, you have to be invested in them or be willing to push them or change them. And if you don't have that again, <laughs> leave, find something else to do, find better coaches, whatever, you know what I mean? But it's funny that we live in a society where it's like, People are like, oh, they'll grow out of that or oh, it'll change or whatever. And it's like, no, it won't. Like if I write my name backwards my entire life and someone's like, oh, that you'll, you'll grow out of that. No, I'm not. You know what I mean? Like, it's like <laughs> you idiot. Like, no, I'm always going to do it that way because it's a bad habit. And I, and someone let me keep doing it. So don't be that person out there, no matter what you're doing. If it's a job, school, whatever. I don't care what it is, you know, yeah. <clears throat> but I, forget, I was going to, I was going to ask you something, Logan. Oh, what's your best story as a, as a young jujitsu practitioner at a, at a brown belt level? What's your best story that you saw on the mat? That's super funny. That just has never left. Oh, your easily. So we were at, well, there's, there's two stories. The one I'm not going to tell <laughs> oh, <boy>. on camera, <laughs> uh, but the other one, we were at an AGC in Pittsburgh and Chad, I know you were there. This mm -hmm. I was still white belt. I think I had like two stripes at the time. And they so dustin Ware always puts on had always put on these agcs all the time mm -hmm. and there was a stipulation for black belts so oh, black belts yeah. compete for free okay that was all it was and there was this taekwondo 
second degree that came in and was like, hey, I'm going to compete in jiu-jitsu. And Dustin was like, hey, please don't. Like, was borderline <laughs> begging this please guy. don't. Like, don't. And there was like, I don't know how old the guy was that he was fighting, but he was like a younger black belt. Like, late 20s, early 30s, maybe. And he put the dude out. Like, out cold, done. And the dude, like, woke up and his coach was like, like Dustin came over and was like, I told you this was going to happen. Like, I asked you not to, you did it anyway. <laughs> Next time they put out a flyer for it, it says all jiu-jitsu, all Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belts compete for free. <laughs> Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, same same yeah. tournament. Um, there was another kid who was in like turtle and like sitting up a little bit and his belt had come off. And the, the other guy grabs the belt, puts it around his neck, and, like, pulls. And I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> like, he just picked up the other kid's belt and yeah, used it as a weapon? Yeah, his belt and, like, pulled it through his neck. Just, like, put his knee on his back and pulled. <laughs> and I was like, what is happening at this tournament? <laughs> that yeah. dude got DQ'd. And I was like, this is insane. The uh, first match that Logan was talking about, I just sent you, Terry. I remember. Oh. It's Cameron Knight is who it yeah, was. Yeah, that was it. Yep, yeah, nine years was, ago. Oh wow, awesome! Yeah, I'll watch it. Yeah, it tells you how uh, much so, tells you how much jujitsu I've watched. I just processed <laughs> what match that was in my head. It was like it's this one. <laughs> yeah, you are like a walking encyclopedia though when it comes to like videos and reels and stuff because this has been your life and your passion. I, I mean, watch a few. I watch a few. Let's be honest. Just, just like, a tiny yeah. bit. Yeah, just, just a, a tiny, tiny bit. bit. He just scratches the surface once in a while. Sometimes hey, I walk in. Like pass him at the front desk, and I like look over, and he's like with his leg up on the chair, just sitting there watching some like jujitsu video or match. <laughs> Always, every day. Like you never take a day off. Hey, dude, what's no. going on? Oh, good. Then his head's back down. <laughs> hey, don't forget video. who's number one's on tonight. Oh, is it? Yeah. So I don't subscribe to uh, Flow Grappling anymore because I oh, cut that as a, I cut that as an expense out. No, I get it. <laughs> I'm trying yeah. to cut all the expenses out so I could buy my son yeah. a car <laughs> <sighs> how selfish of you terry i know i know dang it <laughs> i need to get my priorities straight it's you terrible, do terrible person my son uh, what's he need a car for yeah, yeah you know yeah uh, i've never been like a big sports guy it's like i don't just like sit down and like watch the football games like it's no very kidding. hard yeah i don't anyone anymore that, yeah anyone and, like, that knows you logan though that knows this it's like, like, ah, it's like i don't i just don't see the appeal <clears throat> Like I get yeah. it. Like if there's like a cool like highlight reel of somebody in jujitsu where like somebody's like, Hey, you have to watch this match, like I'll go and watch the match. Sure. Yeah. But like most of the times it like it just makes me mad to watch jujitsu matches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially in person. Oh Lord. Lord have yeah. mercy. Does they're, it they're frustrate you from moves <laughs> or is it frustrate you from like lack of technique? Lack of lack of technique. Yeah. yeah. Lack of technique. Um lack of like adequate coaching like okay. if i hear a coach say something that's like completely off the wall i'm like i just sit there and i think to myself why are you coaching like why <laughs> was, why was that your your brilliant piece of advice you were giving your competitor like i don't know it's just and it's it's frustrating to watch bad jujitsu <clears throat> sure like, yeah it's fine if we're like in the gym training like because we're practicing trying to get better i hate watching like bad jujitsu matches. <laughs> like if I go to a jujitsu like tournament and like help coach, I just get I get frustrated get if frustrated. I'm if I'm watching. Yeah. So yeah, it makes sense. I mean, it makes sense yeah. for individuals that have been around it for a long time, and you've had good habits and you know instilled it. Well, yeah, it, it it speaks to the exposure you've been around. Correct. You know. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> you know. It's true. It's facts. Yeah. And I mean, you know. I know we brag about it a lot, but yeah, because I've place been to at go. you know <laughs> been at tournaments, and I know the one Logan's referring to that we went to all together, and <laughs> he'd be like, "Why doesn't that guy X pass here?" And it's like because he doesn't know, or maybe that's just not their focus. Like that's you know day one stuff for us. Yeah, bread so, and butter, baby. I know. I've been, yeah, been doing bread the butter. X pass for ten years. Well, yeah, I was gonna. Yeah, there's actually like, a video of Logan doing the X pass at like fifteen. Nice. Right, or 14. So, yeah, 14, it's on. 15. Yeah. Dan Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> you uh, you going to get in the ring, Matt, compete at Brown Belt? Oh, no. 
Okay. Um, <laughs> yes. Officially After done. That last one. Last yeah. one. It was, it was the last AGC. It was a year ago in February. Yep. Yeah. Um, won one match, lost the other one, and like I popped my knee. And I was just like, it's like it's time to just be done. Sure. Like my so I've had. I was gonna say, of, are you got yeah, a couple of knee yeah, injuries. You've had a couple. You've had surgery um, on your knee. So. Yeah. So I've torn my meniscus once. Um, got it repaired. You know, got back training, and then within like three months, I popped it again. So thankfully, the second time it's not as bad of a tear. Um, but like it still <clears> clicks sometimes. True. But this was my good knee that had popped <laughs> at the tournament. And it's just like, I have to wear, I make the joke. I'm held together by athletic tape and medical braces. Right. <laughs> so like I wear knee braces every day training. <clears throat> All my fingers are taped. Yeah. So yeah. it's just like, I can handle training. It's just, if I train four or five days a week, like the next three days I'm dead. <laughs> yes yeah so like a lot of people ask me it's like logan why don't you come back to comp class it's like i would love to come back to comp class but if i come to comp class on saturday it means i can't train monday tuesday wednesday yeah, there's a i gotta there's pick a one of those days and not yeah and monday and wednesday i train with my dad so i'm not right. not giving up one of those days it's like tuesday but i'm already there on tuesdays for work so i'm just gonna stay <laughs> and you know one comp class is enough to like hey where's the ice bath <laughs> sure. for my knees so speaking of uh tape i'm gonna have to start taping my fingers again chad because they're starting to hurt on the regular basis yeah. now and i was like this week <laughs> i was you, like get you some of that limitless tape that's right i i was you know i taped all the time and then i quit taping you know when i came back this year mm -hmm. you know and then now it's i think it's to the point like last night i was just you know i, I always have some kind of like whatever they call those things, like the strength things in my hands all the time. I have oh, yeah. the desk and I usually, when I'm watching TV, I have one and I was like, my hands are killing me, but you think You're I'd stop over. doing it. I was going to say, stop <laughs> yeah. doing it. You think I'd stop yeah. doing it, but it's always like, like I, and I think it's more now of an anxious thing. Like I just do it. Like oh, I'll be watching be. TV. Like I have the, I have this thing in my hand, like all the time I'm working and I have this in my hand, like the each individual finger thing. And then I have a metal one. That's the, you yeah. know, whatever. It's like, your, it's like your own fidget spinner. It is my it own is. fidget spinner, man, which yeah. I have one of those here too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, where's um, that at? <laughs> yeah. It's over here, right over here on my desk. <laughs> hey, I'm an, I'm an odd person. I, like jujitsu and all kinds of weird things and listen to classical music at the same time, whatever. Listen, that's who I am. That sounds weird to me, Terry. <laughs> I know <laughs> you and I fit in the same, we're the same square peg going into the round hole or whatever <laughs> round peg going to the square <laughs> hole. <laughs> that's why I get along with you so well. <laughs> I guess we can, we have like a lot of good interest. That's why I get along with Chad too, because we can talk about all kinds of different things from movies to whatever, whatever's out there. Speaking yeah. of, I watched Marvels last night, and I know Chad doesn't watch. Uh, he doesn't usually watch superhero movies. No, not um, much. I know you do though, Logan. Don't you? I used to once, to, once in a while. Um, okay, I haven't watched anything MCU related since what was it, Captain Marvel? I didn't watch that one, and anything past that. Well, good. Don't like, watch it. Date. Haven't watched it. <laughs> just stay so, with Captain Marvel because <laughs> after I watched it, I was like. All right, cool. That's two hours of my life. I'm not getting back. Let me go watch something else. <laughs> Let me go to bed or whatever. I forget what I did. But it's dropping oh, the ball. Huh? I think I came and edited more <laughs> last no, night. There you like, go, I yeah. came and edited the podcast more because I was like, ah, you know what? Uh, let me do this. But anyway, here and there. Just sit there frustrated that you just wasted two hours. I did. Like, I, I was just like, <laughs> it's like that was kind of dumb and a waste of time. But whatever, here and there. I do want to know, man, are you going to get a tattoo or not? <laughs> not to put you that on is, a spot <laughs> that is the question yeah i'm all all clean no tattoos yet um i've debated it we're one um, of the people that have been in the gym longer than yeah. a huge majority of the people you know longer than most yeah. and i think all those guys <laughs> have tattoos a lot of them a there's lot a, of them. Fair, a the fair east coast bit of them that have yeah. the logo on them yeah um, yeah i have and not so and Logan will be one of the few, like myself, that would probably want the jujitsu logo and the East Coast logo. Yeah, that's right. right. So you gotta, yeah. you gotta figure that out. So because I know if I like, I hate 
I, I, I dislike the look of just like random tattoos everywhere. Sure. Yeah. Like, that's just that's just not how my brain is set up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. So like I would want to get like I want to get a full sleeve. Right. right. Yeah. Um. It's just I am very indecisive when it comes to <laughs> art. <laughs> Don't and, do a like, full, full sleeve. Full sleeves are terrible. I mean, <laughs> listen, Chad and I, uh, we know like. Don't do full sleeves. They're so bad. They're really bad for you. Uh, it's just I like the look. <laughs> but don't believe him. Yeah. I'll never, I'll never settle on something where I'm like, I like have to, like have that. Sure. So and that's the thing. I mean, you might when you get ordered. If you don't, it, it's not a big deal. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Put, I mean, I just want to put you on the spot because I know, I know. a lot of us have it. And I'm just so remember, up. Logan. My first tattoo, I was 45. Yeah. So. I got you got plenty. Tattoo. You got plenty of time. <laughs> yeah. You got plenty yeah. of time. You got twenty years. His first tattoo yeah. was at forty-five, and he's going to be forty-nine here soon. At the end, not so soon. Here, not yeah, so, oh, yeah. Let me give him till like November. Or yeah, so September so, or September. That's right. One day I'll closer to this. his birthday, the opposite way. <laughs> yes, right. Exactly. Let's go the opposite way. <laughs> However, he has two full <laughs> sleeves now and leg pieces beginning. So don't yeah. let him fool you. Oh nah. no, I'm not. Yeah, <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, from 45 to 48, and not that I can say much either, because when Chad teased me before, hey, you ever gonna get any more tattoos? Because I had a half sleeve up onto my chest. Now I have two full arms and now a half a leg. <laughs> so there you go. And I'm I'll be 47 in May. So just start now. Now you're all to, covered in tattoos. Yeah, you don't have to worry <laughs> about it, Logan. You wait till you're 40 and be like, "Hey, I'm going through midlife crisis." Like Terry, yeah, hey, let me go get some tattoo. tattoos. Yes, that's pretty. That's what I chalk it up to be. <laughs> that's what I tell people now. They're like, uh, "Wow, you didn't have all those tattoos." I'm like, I mean, is that better than know. like midlife crisis by a like sports car? I think or, so. <laughs> I tell people all the time. I'm like, Look, cheaper. Man, I could have went and bought like some motorcycle. I know how to ride motorcycles. I used to have one. Could have did that. I said I could have went out and bought a sports car and goofed around. I could have messed around on my wife. I could have started going to strip clubs every day. I could have blew money. Jeez. Could have went gambling. I could have. Done he's all thought about. He's stuff. thought about this, right? <laughs> I was like, I could have done all this bad stuff, but I chose not to do that because I wanted it's to like be real. That plan, <laughs> right? Right, exactly. When, yeah, I get looks so when people are like, "Wow, you really." You really did think about this, didn't you? I'm like, nah, just watch a lot of TV and see what all these other people are doing or <laughs> read, read stories not or doing. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> it's bad. All bad mojo. <laughs> right. They are bad vices, <clears throat> which, you know, we live on bad vices. It seems like mm -hmm. not most of us don't, but there's a lot of people that we know that do, unfortunately. But so should I ask him, Chad? It is. Do you want me to ask him? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. He's prepared. We talked about it already. Yeah. Big other... question, Terry. Are you, are you, are you, are, are two you weeks ago when you asked for this I know. podcast, I was I know. like, ah, all but right. See, uh, but see, this Start is going to be, this is, you, you're not ready for this one. Oh, you got a second no. question. I do, because I knew you, I knew, and everyone out there was like, oh, what's, is Terry going to ask this question? How Terry much question. <laughs> does your father mean to you being on the mat oh he switched up on you a little bit switched first it up on me uh yeah. it means it means the world um like i don't know what i would do training on a daily basis if, if he wasn't there like it's been very difficult these last couple of months because my father for those of you who don't know has had sciatica really bad in his back mm -hmm. and it's made it difficult for him to train so you know some people like give him crap for sitting in the corner myself included uh just doing like kettlebell <laughs> exercises right, right. he's there but, though everybody he yeah, is there he shows there every up day full gi belt wraps but, but he's working out yeah it's it's an awesome experience to sit there and train with your father on a daily basis so for sure yeah that wasn't easy for logan to answer like, I, no I, you got it for uh, sure i know yeah, you thought I was going to ask you about someone See, else. See, everybody, get you more than the Mr. Hyman question. Yeah, Not Logan as hearted does, as you believe. Yeah. Uh, Logan does have a heart. <laughs> yes. Yeah, everyone out there that's listening, <laughs> that's from the gym, they're like, "Who is this guy? Who's I don't this know guy this guy. What they do with Logan? Right. <laughs> like that's not the guy that I just rolled with this week. <laughs> <laughs> that guy tried to kill me. Guy's trying to rip my arm off. Trying to rip my yeah. arm off. He, Beat me he over kept the head talking about it. trophies and not the metal ones. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's been eleven years of you know every week training with him. Yeah, yeah. So, that's not cool. many people have that experience. No. Yeah. Nope. It's 
Very and we've cool. we've tried to convince Brian, his father, to come on the show, but he's not a uh, <laughs> he's not a guy that likes to talk to people. He likes to stay in the corner and work with his kettlebell and yeah, wrist yes. lock guys like me. I can't even get him to teach a class. There was one time where I like, and listen, Brian will help everybody off to the side. He's just not the guy that have the center of the, of the class. Yeah. And I needed somebody like I had something going on. Nobody could cover. He's like, well, I'll open up and just do an open mat. I'm like, that's cool. That's fine. And obviously he will help you. If you ask him a question, he just does not, he doesn't like being in front of everybody. And I get it. It's not for yeah. everybody. It's definitely not yeah. for everybody. He's, he's definitely more introverted yeah for yeah. sure myself or mom <laughs> yeah 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 they're for like sure. polar opposites on that yeah <laughs> yeah he's, he's, he's probably up go ahead is he upstairs watching uh prices right right now probably oh no so the price is right is over uh <laughs> for those of you who don't know my father has been retired for the past two three years yeah um, after 27 years of service and law enforcement and now he sits on the couch watching the price is right every day uh and playing with the dog yes. yeah <laughs> yes. hey that sounds like no, a good retirement it, it, not bad he's living his best life right absolutely now. <laughs> except and, for the back thing he's perfect he's set yes he's good to go and <laughs> they're, scary. Uh, they're on date night right now oh nice <laughs> oh, okay. date lunch but date lunch yeah cool. and scaring logan <laughs> oh, your dad said that. yes your dad said i have to tell a great story of it was pitch black Brian hid downstairs and Logan screamed and fell on the ground and curled up into a little ball. And he said, Jiu-Jitsu's not going to save you now or something like that. But I forget. He, what told, he, told, him to refund, he, said, yeah, he told him to get a refund. Actually, yeah, he asked Chad for a yeah. refund. <laughs> yeah. Well, as some of you can see, uh, there is not a fourth wall in my room. It is yes. a, a curtain. <laughs> yeah. If you're only listening right so. now, you should subscribe to our YouTube channel, by the way, if you're only listening, so you can watch our beautiful faces speak this great yeah, stuff. You can put a name to a face. Yes. You see, <laughs> there's a curtain. Finally see the Logan that's been talked about. Yes, in so many podcasts. that's right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we have, we Logan might be the Logan or trace might be the most two talked about people in the podcast since we yeah, have for sure. the podcast. <laughs> like, Everybody that we haven't mentioned it before we go eventually here, Logan is the mouse at Chuck E. Cheese that ter terrorized, <laughs> yes. terrorized Jay, big Jay. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> We've heard the story. So we've heard that phase. story. That yeah. is me. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Back when I graduated high school, I was the first job besides East Coast was Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. Well, so, that good awful place. But <laughs> well, we kept you for an hour, man. But you're still not getting off that easy. <laughs> no, that's fine. I figured I would. <laughs> uh, as I've said many times in the show, people listen to the show. I think it's vital. Uh, how much? How much is the Hyman, Mister Hyman, East Coast Martial Arts, Chad, um, Pete, two people that's been around you for a very long time? I know. I know there's others. I think Brad probably too. Scarborough, um, Matt Craddock, uh, obviously been around you for a very long time. Um, how much to some of those guys, obviously, Mr. Hyman being the pillar, uh, influenced you influence and stuff that you've done in your life. Cause you're young man, uh, influence mm -hmm. going to school, being able to understand what they would have done or what they would do and how they would carry themselves and handle themselves. How much has that really impacted you? Cause we have a lot of guys on the show that obviously mm -hmm. I care about greatly, um, that talk about that i always put this question on them because uh, i obviously people know this it's vital for me to actually get this information to people but you're young and we haven't had anyone on the show that is in your age range that have had some people like this impact them so at your own discretion logan divulge in how that is however you want to say it yeah i i don't think i would be on this podcast right now if it weren't for them. Um, I'm not too sure where I'd be in life if, <laughs> you know, like I'd never started East Coast. Sure. Yeah. As um, Chad laughs, stop laughing. Just, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Mr. Heinemann, we'll start with him because he was the greatest. <clears throat> obviously. Uh, he, you know, meant so much to so many people. And Chad and I, we had talked about this the other day of, because you guys had just had Brad on, and mm -hmm. his viewers you'll have already seen by now, 
and heard Brad's reaction to this question. Well, not yet. It drops on Monday. Yeah, but Logan's well, like, show is going to be where that's yeah. once this. Oh, drops. gotcha, gotcha, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Um, that you know, we all think he like is going to keep walk. He's he's just going to walk through the door one day, right? Um, and that's how everybody feels. Like he mm-hmm. had such a profound impact on not only the students in his gym, but on martial arts in Ohio as well. Like there was not a bigger pillar of martial arts at the time in Ohio than Steve Heineman. Mm-hmm. So he impacted more people than just in the gym. For sure. And that's something that not a lot of people today realize. <clears throat> um, they just see, you know, when you walk in the belt above the desk, mm-hmm. which was his, and yeah. they see a couple of photos of, you know, this guy sitting, some dude jumping and kicking. Yeah, they probably don't know who it is, right? They just, they just don't. <laughs> they just don't understand. Yeah. So it's it's a shame that none of these students, individuals who are training, you know, won't have the opportunity to learn from him. So, but they do. <laughs> they do have that in a roundabout way. Yes, <laughs> they do. They do in the right way. Greatness is absorbed by other people who are willing to be great and pass that on and not be selfish. And everybody that's ever instructed at East coast martial arts is now a pillar of the first pillar that was built that Mr. Hyman built. And this is from a person that never got to meet him, but I know this I'm old enough and I'm mature enough and I understand this and I see it through those who I have had the blessing and opportunity to interact with yourself your father chad pete you know brad those type of people have shown that if you're willing to not be selfish and to pay it forward and give all that ability to other people because in my opinion only my opinion i believe that's what mr hyman stood for he was more concerned about people being great and being great stewards in this life than just being um an egotistical person on his oh, own, for sure. which we yeah, live okay. in a world where so many people, that's what they want. They want to be famous. They want to be rich. They want it all for themselves. They're not willing to sacrifice and, or give it all away. And yeah. I've been around enough people now at our gym <clears throat> that, 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 that goes a long way. So I see it in you all every day. Obviously when you speak, I know this, I know I ask you these weird questions, even personally talking. I, I don't, really think they're weird. I know a lot of people probably do (laughs) (laughs) about, you know, what are you doing? How's this going or how's a job interview going or whatever have you, um, you know, game night or what's this, I'll text you goofy things or whatever. It's because it's important to me to, to pay that forward as well. And I know that's from you and Chad is the same way, um, pushing each other. And I think that's a pillar of what he represented him. I know people don't want to hear it constantly, or maybe we beat the dead horse on this show, but it's vital that this legacy get, is p- paid for. Get used to it. <laughs> yeah, right. Get away. used to it. It ain't going away. I won't, I won't allow it. And I sure yeah. know that Chad's not going to allow it. So, yeah. you know, that's, uh, I think sometimes I do think why, you know, Chad, you know, we came up with the word limitless and that was Chad texted me and said, why don't we just call it limitless radio cast? Um, and sometimes I feel like there was something in his head that said this because that's what was built. That's how this was built for him in his martial arts career and to pass on to you guys, like be limitless in what you're doing. You know, don't just be stagnant. Don't just be this person that no one wants to be around. (laughs) You know what I mean? Or that people talk about behind your back. So it's obviously a great answer. Obviously, you know, I, I, you know, I, don't like to spring it on people in terms of emotionally. Cause I know it's hard for you guys because yeah. you, you, you love him forever. It's inevitable. Um, that doesn't go away. And I know it's a hard thing to answer, but, uh, I also think it's important for people out there to understand like how much, <clears throat> uh, someone impacts someone's life. You know? For sure. So, yeah, for sure. Like so. people won't meet him, but they'll meet him. Right. Exactly. And that's how I like to portray mm-hmm. it for sure. You know, I know Chad doesn't like to talk about it at all. It's hard. It's <laughs> not hard at all. Thing. Not at all. I know, but it's, but yeah. it's hard. It's yeah. very, very hard when you have someone that means that much to you 
that has influenced you that much and they're no longer there. For sure. Um, it's very hard. The best way I can tell people all the time though, is to be so proud to take that <clears throat> legacy and to give it to people. Yep. Don't be sad about it. Be happy that you're blessed in order to give that information to other people. Mm -hmm. Because to be honest, like when I'm gone, I don't want awards. I don't want anything. I want people to speak that way about myself. Like I want people to go, man, he was, so he was selfless. He would give everything away. Like he doesn't care. Like all I want is other people to be successful and better for the best parts. And I think that's what you guys emulate about Mr. Hyman and, that, and I selfishness. <laughs> I'll say selfishness of myself. I think mm -hmm. that's why I fit in so well at East coast yeah. too, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know? So, but Logan, thanks, man. Is there anything you want to shout out? We have you, uh, we're, we're over an hour. Anything you want to shout out now that I put uh, you on the spot and you're like, no, I can't even think straight. Thanks, dude. I, you can't even think you're straight <laughs> anymore, Terry. Uh, but just back to the, the other, you know, core people of East. Oh Coast. yeah. Yeah. Um, you didn't talk about Chadley. I was going <laughs> to talk say, about me. Yeah, see, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> um, like obviously the impact that Chad has had has been, you know, monumental in both my life and East coast just for years. Um, of the other guys, you know, Pete, uh, Pete Chalk, Matt Craddock, even Brad. We'll toss him a bone. <laughs> even Brad. <laughs> even Brad. Um, you know, Dom Green. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Sorry. Uh, and then some of the other guys who don't train at East Coast anymore. Your, you know, Shannon White. Yep. yep. Tim Hartzell. Yeah. yeah Blake Zach. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Crass, all get beat those up, dudes. get beat up by all those dudes when you're a kid. Yeah, yeah, 13 years old, getting beat up by these monsters, and then yeah, Shannon being Shannon, and then right, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know it. All of those guys embodied, you know, Mr. Hyman and his yeah. you know, principles of East Coast, and then it obviously trickles just down. So sure, for sure, you know, yeah. all of those guys are super important like not only to me but to like my journey in general yeah for sure so again i don't know you know where i'd be if it were not for yeah. all of those guys so probably be that's good taking days off sitting on the mat somewhere i don't know <laughs> yeah living not in your really. parents basement or something yeah, I don't know. <laughs> live in this parents basement like Wait that. a minute. No, just... <laughs> oh, hey, three walls and a curtain? Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> greatness breeds but... greatness, man. Mm -hmm. Bottom line. It is. You want to be great? Yeah. And circle you know, yourself with, with great people. With that, you know, some people will like <laughs> I I make the I make it as a joke, but it's it's not really like I, I make the joke that I'm the bad guy. Like I will be like when teaching, sure. like, I'm not afraid to be, oh, you know, you're the heavy the guy. I'm, yeah. yeah. Like I, at one point or another students will be like, I, I don't like Mr. Mueller, but eventually, you know, one day I hope <laughs> in the future, they'll look back and go, yeah, that was like, thank you for that. Right. So like I said, but, and you're, you're, you coached the right way. You don't, there are people and uh, this is a pet peeve of mine because I've been coached for a very long time. I love people who coach, but I don't like people who coach the wrong way, who think they're a good coach mm -hmm. and, and there are right ways to do it. People will argue with me. Oh, you have to do this. You have to do this. No, you don't. Like there are certain things you do and you do not have to do. And your yeah. goal should be being able to teach that person to project them to be better. And then later on in life to understand, and they're going to have that aha moment at some point in life. You don't have to be a butthead. You don't have to, be <laughs> that. you know what I mean? Lack of better terms. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Word. It's like I'm, I'm hard on everyone because like it was a portion of it is, you know, others were hard on me when I was right. training. Right? Yeah. To, like make me better. Sure. The other is, I want you to succeed. Yeah. And that's sometimes I think that gets lost in translation right. sometimes. Right? No, a hundred percent. Like I am very like strict matter of fact, like we are doing it this way for this reason. Mm -hmm. Um, whether it's jujitsu, whether it's karate, whether it's you know, stand up, whatever. Sure. Um, so Be being hard on someone and being mean to someone in yeah. coaching is two different things. 
You know what I mean? <clears throat> well, that, I mean, let's be honest. It, that, you know, especially in our martial arts program with the mm -hmm. with the kids, is a lot of people aren't hard on the kids. You know, right. and I don't mean that in right. a bad way. I should say hold them accountable for their actions. Right? When great when way to say it, Chad. When, yes. when 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 kids come in the door, I say it. I know. You know, Logan's big on it. Like we will say hi. And a lot of kids just walk past us. No eye contact, no nothing. Like that wouldn't have happened when we came up in martial arts. Like, no, oh, you, <laughs> you, you look at who you were talking to and you say, hi, it doesn't have to be some big conversation. Just acknowledge that person. Yeah. So eye contact is a big thing for me, man. And nobody does it. <laughs> nobody teaches yeah, it. Either. I don't know if we were taught it or we just did it because we saw others do it. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? I, I Respect accountability. That, yeah. yeah. You, you learn. It's yeah. like a learned behavior where it's, yes. you know, yeah. like if, if you're teaching, if you're parenting someone, it's like, Hey, I'm looking you in the eye. Like, look me in the eye when we're talking. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like a yeah, firm so. handshake. It's yep. just For sure. that's a, yeah. a respect type thing. Yeah. So oh my, but I think just, it just has gotten lost over yeah. <laughs> For some sure. generations. Well, the yeah. culture we live in too, it's accepted not to be that way. And I'm like, mm -hmm. but we're, I'm going to get killed for this. <laughs> We, we make people, we, we, it's okay to be soft. And I am a strong believer that it's not. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. people are like, oh, how do you, you determine softness by A, B, and C? Uh, I can bench 250 pounds. You consider that not being soft? No, you don't understand. My softness and non softness is looking someone in the eye, shaking their hand, being respectful. Please, thank you. Yes, sir. No, sir. Be accountable for your actions. We are a soft society yeah. where we don't do that anymore. We yeah. don't appreciate people. It's not the hard skills that right. you have in life. It's the soft skills that make you, you know, soft or not soft. Like, yeah. I guess that doesn't make sense as much, but like soft skills, like shaking hands, looking someone in the eye, like those type, types of speech, like how you present yourself versus, you know, a hard skill, which would be like your max bench. Like, yeah. Sure. Like, yeah does yeah, it make you yeah. physically strong yes but does it make you like mentally strong respectable yeah. you know member of society yep yeah. maybe maybe not but i'd yeah. rather have the weakest kid on the team and have great respect honor to individuals whether they're the same age younger than them older than them whatever have you with that kind of stuff logan and chad that you guys just talked about than a kid that could go lift a million pounds or be the greatest world beater in the world. I'm like, that's fine. Those, those people are fine, but if they don't have this, no good. And if this kid over here, you know, plays chess and I'm not, I'm not saying that to be mean, just trying to give you a different perspective of a kid lifting and a kid playing a game. Yeah. And this kid over here, is super respective and, you know, super accountable and so on and so forth. Good. I'm going to take the kid playing chess every day. Give me a hundred of them. And, and they'll be the best in the world because of those reasons, <clears throat> you know. And if they're not the best in the world, they'll be, you know, the best version of themselves. They'll be able to, yeah, 100% because they've built that and it's been ingrained in They'll be able to them. succeed, you know, wherever they go in life, whether it's, you know, to continue to play chess. Right. Or it's to go and, you know, get some degree and land the biggest job that they wanted in right. their life. 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Great show. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks yeah. so much, man. Thank yeah, you for, for having on. me. Yeah, dude. I love talking to you. Um, I think Logan. Was about, what, what was Troxler saying? Oh, oh Troxler, what did Trox uh, say? No, I was saying Logan he said Logan beats me up all the time. <laughs> <laughs> he said Logan beats me up all the time. Pretty much like what Jack just said, what Tom said. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that God, he beats the crap out of me. He's he's very good. He's very hey. sound. But he teaches me a ton. Like Trox Both has, of the people that have been criticized looking for they're grown 40 year old men just so we know there so you go yes there you go <laughs> they criticize you for being up. mean he's not picking on people. yeah not picking on the younger not picking, kids well yeah well, unless they, i'm smaller but, it, but yeah, it's fine. <laughs> yeah smaller but 10 times stronger than you were five months ago four months Usually ago just three months men. ago <laughs> maybe a little bit yeah <laughs> uh, all, all right man. you got anything chad so. no i appreciate you logan thanks for coming on and yeah, thank you for doing, having me. Yeah, yeah. doing it. I think Logan was a little shocked when I texted him. <laughs> like, you want to be on I the podcast? Like, yes. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. The greatest uh, information as as comes from people. My dad. Yeah, that's you don't ever have to worry about that. Uh, Your dad's going to be like, <laughs> I came into the gym on the walker and I still haven't been on the podcast. You're like, were well, you ready to talk? <laughs> yeah, that's not happening. Yeah. I teased him maybe, this week and said you were coming on. on. Yeah, he, he was like negative. 
I know, because yeah. then I can spring the question of how important, how great is it to have you on the mat? With I him? know it'd be great. Yeah. You got to edit that part out so he doesn't hear it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's good, man. Appreciate you, brother. I will see you this week. Uh, oh, thanks right. for everything. Keep doing what you're doing. God bless you and your family and everything, man. If you need anything, obviously hit us up. If there's anything we can help with, as you know, how we roll on this show. This is as real as it gets, people. We are real to the core. There is no fakeness here. Real people sit at our tables. Real people are pouring into us as we will pour into them. So this mm -hmm. is Limitless. Love you guys. Chad, you good? I'm good. All right. Until next week, Logan, appreciate you, man. We'll see you. Thank you. Take care. Later. Later.